Peak Procedure The Head and Neck Examination The Head and Neck Examination is divided into four subgroups. The Overall Appraisal of Head, Neck, Face and Skin Lymph Nodes of Head and Neck Salivary and Thyroid Glands and Temporomandibular Joint Subgroup 1 – The Overall Appraisal of the Head, Neck, Face and Skin While seating and talking with the patient, unobtrusively assess facial form, symmetry and skin. Divide the face and neck into imaginary zones. Scan the hair and forehead, looking from the left side to the right side of the patient's face. Next, scan the eye region of the face. Then, the cheek and nose region and lip region of the face. Finally, scan the neck. Note asymmetry, hair loss, difference in pupils, facial movements, unusual coloring, lesions, or scars. Subgroup 2, the lymph nodes of the head and neck. To detect abnormalities such as swelling, tumors, or enlarged lymph nodes, the structure being examined must be compressed against a firm structure or between the examiner's fingers. Practice is required to develop an effective palpation technique. The key to correct palpation technique is to remember to compress the structure being examined, such as a lymph node, against another structure, such as the skull of the head. Incorrect palpation technique involves lightly walking or dancing the fingertips over a structure. These light dancing movements are unsuccessful in detecting nodules, tumors, swelling, or enlarged lymph nodes. Correct palpation technique for the head and neck examination involves using the fingertips to compress the structure against the underlying tissues using a circular motion. For example, using circular motions to compress the pre- and post-auricular lymph nodes against the bones of the skull. If a lymph node is enlarged, you will feel it as you compress it gently against the firm bone of the skull. Here, the clinician is examining the post-auricular lymph nodes in back of the ears. The palpation technique involves making circular motions with the fingertips while gently pressing down against the underlying bone of the skull. The first lymph nodes to be palpated are the occipital lymph nodes. Ask the patient to tip his or her head forward slightly. If the patient has long hair, Ask him or her to assist you by holding it up so that the neck is fully visible. Position your fingertips at the base of the skull. Beginning at the midline of the neck, use circular motions to compress tissues against the base of the skull. Work outward along the hairline until you reach the sternomastoid muscle. Cover the entire area slightly above and below hairline because the location of the lymph nodes varies among patients. Next, examine the post-auricular lymph nodes located behind the ears. Begin on the right side of the patient's head, displace the right ear forward, and visually inspect the back of the ear and the skin behind the ear. The ears are common sites for lesions, such as basal cell carcinoma, Palpate the post-auricular nodes using steady, gentle circular motions to compress the tissues against the bone of the skull. Repeat this procedure to examine behind the patient's left ear. Slide your fingers around the ear to the pre-auricular lymph nodes located in front of the ears. Palpate the pre-auricular nodes using steady, gentle circular compression with your fingertips against the underlying bone. Reposition your hand at the midline of the mandible to examine the submental lymph nodes. Use your thumb and index finger to compress the area behind and beneath the symphysis of the mandible. 
Next, examine the submandibular nodes on the right side of the patient's head. Each hand has a role in examining this structure. First, use your left hand as a stabilizing hand to move the tissue toward the right side of the neck. Sliding the tissue toward the right assists the clinician in palpating the nodes. With the tissue moved to the right, use your right hand for palpation. Cup your fingers under the chin and roll the tissue up and over the border of the mandible. Keeping your fingertips in place, allow the tissue to slowly slide down over the mandible back into normal position. As the tissue moves over the bone of the mandible, enlarged lymph nodes are detective as firm, grape-like structures. The submandibular nodes on the left side of the jaw are examined using the same procedure. Next, examine the cervical lymph nodes on the right side of the patient's neck. Ask the patient to assist you by turning his head to the left and tipping his head down slightly to rest the chin in the palm of your left hand. In this position, the sternomastoid muscle will stand out. First, palpate the cervical nodes medial to the muscle. With your right hand, grasp the body of the muscle between your fingertips and thumb. Rotate your fingertips back and forth over the muscle, covering its entire length from behind the ear to the clavicle. Reposition the fingertips of your index and middle fingers under the muscle. This is the position for palpating the cervical nodes posterior to the muscle. Apply gentle compression against the underlying tissues along the entire length of the muscle from the clavicle to the ear. Repeat this procedure to examine the cervical nodes on the left side of the neck. For the supraclavicular nodes, ask the patient to face forward with his chin tipped slightly downward. This position relaxes the muscles, allowing easier palpation of the lymph nodes. Place your index and middle fingers above the clavicle on the right side of the neck and apply circular compression. Palpate the nodes on the left side using the same technique. Subgroup 3, Salivary and Thyroid Glands. Begin this subgroup by examining the parotid glands. Place the palms of your hands in front of the ears with your fingers extending the full length of the cheek. Use gentle circular compression to compress the soft tissue against the cheekbones. The submandibular glands are located by finding the slight notch in the inferior border of the mandible. Place your index fingers near the angle of the mandible. Slowly move the fingertips forward until you feel the slight depression in the mandible. The submandibular glands are located below the jaw in this area. Move your fingers under the jaw in preparation for the examination. Ask the patient to assist you by pressing the tip of the tongue against the roof of his mouth. This causes the mylohyoid and tongue muscles to tense, making it easier to palpate the submandibular glands. Bilaterally compress the glands upward against the tensed muscles. The thyroid gland lies underneath the thyroid cartilage, the Adam's apple, at the midline of the neck. A normal thyroid gland is not visible under the skin, so a special technique will help you locate the gland. Give the patient a cup of water and ask him to swallow sips of water as you observe. The thyroid gland, along with the adjacent structures, will move up and down as the patient swallows. Now that you have located the thyroid, you are ready to palpate it. Begin your examination with the right lobe of the gland. You will be using your right hand for palpation and your left hand as a stabilizing hand. Ask the patient to assist you by tilting his head slightly to the right. Use your left hand to gently displace the trachea slightly to the right. Your left hand functions only as a helping hand 
while palpation is done with your right hand. Examination of the thyroid uses a unique technique in which your hands remain stationary while the thyroid gland moves up and down beneath your fingertips. Place the fingers of your right hand between the Adam's apple and the sternomastoid muscle. Rest your fingers lightly in a stationary position. Ask the patient to take a sip of water and swallow. As the patient swallows, the gland slides beneath your fingers as it moves up and down. Repeat this procedure several times. Do not be concerned if you do not feel the gland. A normal thyroid gland is undetectable or barely detectable. Repeat a similar maneuver to examine the left lobe of the thyroid gland. Subgroup 4, the temporomandibular joints. Begin this subgroup by locating the temporomandibular joints. Place your index fingers just in front of the tragus of each ear. Ask the patient to slowly open and close the mouth. As he opens, your fingertips should drop into the joint spaces. Once you have located the TMJ, place your fingertips over the joints. Palpate the joints as the patient slowly opens and closes several times. Maintain your hands in the same position to palpate the joints as the patient makes side-to-side -side movements with the mandible. Ask the patient to open slightly and move the lower jaw laterally to the left, then slowly to the right. Finally, ask the patient to protrude the lower jaw forward. Assessment of the range of motion is optional based on any notable findings or symptoms reported by the patient. The patient's fingers are proportional to his or her jaw and are a good indication of adequate range of motion. Ask him to place the index, middle, and ring fingers between the incisal edges of the upper and lower incisors. This gentleman cannot easily place three fingers between the incisal edges of his upper and lower incisors. This indicates limited range of motion. The head and neck examination is a physical examination technique consisting of a systematic visual inspection of the head and neck combined with palpation of the lymph nodes, glands, and temporomandibular joint.